What fascinates me about your story, because you talk about Myra Hindley approaching you, you were seven years old, you were in a playground, mm. and to this day you remember her perfume and her kind eyes. And for me, that, that's what makes it even more um, sinister, is that children trust a woman. When they see a woman, they trust that that woman's going to be kind to them. I think it was always the, the... I mean, for us as children, it was always the emphasis on don't talk to strange men. Yeah. Don't accept sweets from a strange man. You know, and that sort of thing. I think with Myra Hindley, um, <clears throat> she reminded me of my sisters, because I had sisters that were slightly older than me, uh, and the smell of the, the, the hairspray and the perfume, that's the sort of thing that we had yeah. in, in the house, you know, so... Yeah, I, de I definitely remember all that. So you went back to the, the house with her on the promise, as we just it. heard, yeah, of, of bread and home, yeah. jam. Um, even at the age of seven, an instinct kicked in, didn't it? T tell us about what happened in the house that suddenly made you think, uh, I'm in trouble here. Well, I, I, th the very first thing that she'd done when she brought the slice of bread and jam out, it was the way she actually put it onto the table and... It, it wasn't placed on the table, it was basically dropped and pushed so towards me. she went from being kind mm. to instantly being a bit well, sinister. Well, it was her eyes mainly, because I looked up at her as she dropped it. I think I was a bit surprised that it was dropped. Mm. I don't know why, you know, it was just... And I looked at her... Well, well actually, my first thoughts when I looked at the bread and jam, and I, I know it sounds really strange, there was no uh, margarine on it. Oh. <laughs> and I noticed that, you know, mm. and... I looked up at her and I just noticed that there was a complete change in her altogether. Mm. Tommy, can I just ask you, really, just what was the house like? Do you remember the house? Oh, was, I mean, it, was, I, it, was it, what, you know, as a seven year old kid going in, was I, it an ordinary house or? No, it, the, 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 it was a small terraced house. And I can remember, I actually thought at one time that an old woman would more than that, or an old people would come out and speak to me because it didn't match them. Mm. The, the furniture in there was sort of quite old furniture for that time. Uh, and so... But I do remember, cos I was sitting there for about three or four minutes, and I can remember looking round and... It, it was just slowly things were starting to... Where was so where... Brady? Brady was in the kitchen all the time. Right. Uh, he, he... And were they talking... Was she going out of the room and coming back she... in? Were they talking? I think she went out about three times. And could you hear them talking? No, I, I could hear something going on and there was just mumbles. And, and I wasn't really sort of trying to listen to them anyway. I was just sitting there waiting for this slice of bread and jam. So what was the point then when you thought, right, I need to get out of here and how am I going to get out of here? He... I heard him... She'd gone back into the kitchen and I heard him basically raise his voice. It was angry and he says, effing waste. But he used the full mm, words, you know. Mm. And it was quite angry. And uh, there was another thing as well, is Myra Henley had a glass of uh, sherry. And it was the sherry, the smell of that, which I absolutely hated because my parents were alcoholics. Right. And that's what they drank. Mm. So know, when for... you were trying, trying to escape, did they come out of the kitchen? Did they no, see no. you escaping or...? Uh, well, basically what happens, when I decided to go, I went straight for the window. The window was right next to me on the left-hand side. And I turned the catch and I lifted it and it got stuck. <laughs> And it was stuck to about four inches. And I'm thinking, the first thing I'm thinking is, is my father uh, put wooden blocks on our own windows mm. and that's as far as it's going to go. And, and at that time, really and truthfully, I felt so ill. I just wanted to faint. You know, you get yeah, the, that, the oh, panic. Oh, my daughter's seven, I can't the even The panic, was, you know, was just there. And fortunately for me, I just carried on and it just shot up. And I think that's what... Phew, made her mm. come out because all I heard then was the little mm. S H I T getting away. And did they try and go after you? She did. Uh, I, I actually managed to get out of the window and I felt her and she grabbed the back of my foot. Well, it was the ankle that she got because my momentum just kept me going. And yeah. I was... As we know now, they, they killed other children. I know. And you say that you've feel guilt about that. Can I feel so guilty. Explain that you know, to I'm us. Sorry. I, I feel guilty about John Kilbride because it was only... Sorry. <clears throat> it was... It was a week afterwards that John was taken. 
And sometimes I, I, I just feel guilty and I think if he killed me, perhaps John might have been alive. Oh, yeah. And in well, some respects... Like that, though, yeah. can you? No, you but in some respects, like then I feel... It's, perhaps it's my fault that John's... No. It's very killed. common no. survivor guilt. Well, have you ever had any sort any help for it? No, 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 not really. I mean, now, you know, I call my, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. I'm, you know, I've got a lovely family, a lovely wife. Uh, I'm a, children. Uh, and beautiful children. And I'm, I'm a survivor mm. for, for, for lots and lots of other things. And I think the book will explain... Therapy, yeah. Yeah. Kind of getting but it you, all out there. You must be very, very overprotective of your own children now as a father. My children never went out on their own. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know it's, 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 it's stupid, really, because, you know, all parents tend to wrap the children up in cotton wool. Uh, I think I overdone it. Mm. But having said that, my children actually do that to their own children now. Mm. And I think it's one of those you things... Would, though, wouldn't you? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, uh, well, just... Tommy, it's an incredible story. Thank mm. you for coming, staying and no, sharing it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure and, um, talking to all you guys. Tommy,